Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start with the story. ATA for planning my wedding while SIL is getting divorced. My sister-in-law is SIL and I have never really seen eye to eye. We have different views on life and how we live it. While I try to be respectful or indifferent about her choices, she's always trying to impose her beliefs and choices on me and her brother, my fiancé. My fiancé and I, 26M and 26F, have been together for seven years, and we have a super loving relationship. He proposed six months ago and I started planning the wedding three months ago. Our relationship is strong, with great communication. We still go on dates, love dressing up and share activities and hobbies. Nothing's changed, we're more in love than ever. On the flip side, Asael has a different outlook. She was married, and her marriage was one of those where they brag about how much they can't stand each other. She would mock me and my fiancé's relationship, calling our dates and dressing up bullshit, saying we only did it for attention and didn't really love each other. She also couldn't wait for us to end up hating each other in the future. SIL and her husband filed for divorce two months ago. Honestly, I'm indifferent about it. I don't feel sad or happy, just don't care. Yesterday, my mother-in-law, M.I.L., and father-in-law, F.I.L., came over for dinner. As I was talking about some wedding details, M.I.L. confronted me and asked how I could be so happy and excited about planning a wedding while S.I.L. was going through a divorce. My fiancé tried to intervene, but M.I.L. told him to shut up, calling him a terrible brother for not supporting his sister through this tough time. She also said I had no empathy for S.I.L. and was only focused on my wedding and my silly dates. I told her that I don't feel sorry for S.I.L., who bragged about hating her husband and being in a loveless marriage. They got what was coming to them. I won't feel bad for someone who mocked my happiness and relationship. M.I.L. said I was incredibly insensitive for saying that and expected an apology from me, as well as from S.I.L. She left after that, telling us to call if we wanted to apologize, and only then. Additional info M.I.L. didn't want us to cancel the wedding per se, but she wanted us to either delay it or at least not be so excited about planning it because the family is going through a rough time. They almost broke up a week before the wedding. That's all I'll say. My fiancé shares my views. He's expressed his feelings to his family multiple times, but they often dismiss him, saying he's just joking, even when he's dead serious. Sometimes when he expresses discomfort with S.I.L.'s mockery, they call him too sensitive and say he can't take a joke. Top Comments They don't get to decide how sensitive you should be or what kind of behavior your fiancé should tolerate. It's not a joke if you don't find it funny. You need to start enforcing boundaries with consequences. You're telling them that you don't appreciate their language or behavior. Now you need to back it up with some consequences. Don't call them. Your fiancé should send a text saying that their behavior and comments are rude and they owe you both an apology. Don't engage with them until you get a genuine apology. If they do apologize, and it should be a real apology, not just an, I'm sorry you feel that way type, then if they misbehave again, the visit or call should end immediately and they should be put on a timeout. This behavior needs to stop now before you get married or have kids. It might help if you and your fiancé went to counseling to learn how to deal with them. People who mocked my relationship and bullied my family wouldn't be welcome near it. At some point, you might have to decide if keeping contact with them is beneficial. If they're just bullies who refuse to change, you might be better off without them. A good counselor can help you navigate this relationship. Participant 1 So she belittles you and your fiancé, a congrats on the wedding, by the way, for having a loving, healthy relationship and it's excused as just joking. But when you call out Asael's toxic relationship with her ex-husband, everyone's shocked. That's just lovely. Participant 2 Well, then they and Asael are too sensitive about the divorce. They should be celebrating, not mourning. It sounds like Asael always needs to be the center of attention, and your wedding takes that away from her. AITA for refusing to take in my brother-in-law's kids while family tries to pressure us. We're in a tough spot right now. My husband's brother Jack and his wife Linda tragically died in a car accident, leaving behind two kids, 14-year-old girl and 11-year-old boy. My in-laws are heartbroken, as are the kids' other grandparents. However, since the grandparents are in assisted living, they can't take the kids in. They want to keep the kids in the family, so they're pushing for one of Jack or Linda's siblings, Sam, my husband's sister, Linda's brother George, or Linda's sister Amy, to step up. Currently, the kids are staying with George. But his wife only agreed to take them in temporarily. Money is tight for them, and recently, she told George that if he tricked her into taking the kids permanently, she'd leave him. Now George wants out. 
Sam's sister lives in New York with roommates, so it's down to us and Amy. Amy has been telling the grandparents that Sam and I will take in the kids without even asking us first. All five family members have called Sam to insist it's the right thing to do. But honestly, we can't. Our house only has three bedrooms, and we already have three kids. We can't afford a bigger place, and there's no basement. Amy argues that we're the only ones who can take the kids because she and her husband are child-free and don't know how to care for kids. She also suggested that if we don't take them, we'll be responsible for her brother's divorce. She said since we already have three kids, adding two more wouldn't be a big deal. Plus, she claimed we have extra income, which is not true. We're also struggling financially. Linda's sister is married to a high-earning consultant who makes more than both Sam and I combine, so I don't understand why she can't take in the kids and learn to parent. Amy just says she and her husband travel a lot, he for work, and she tags along. Last night, my in-laws called again, begging us to take the kids. Sam is considering it, but I told him no. I'm working longer hours to ensure our kids have a college fund. I didn't put in all those extra hours just for my kids to either not go to college or to be burdened with huge debts. I told Sam that Linda's sister should give up her traveling before we make our kids share rooms and use their college funds for their cousins. Sam suggested we ask the kids if they're okay with it, which really upset me. I'm not about to make my kids feel guilty so that a woman who likes to travel can keep doing so while everyone else struggles. Right now I'm considering telling Sam that if he involves our kids in this, I might leave him too. I don't want Jack and Linda's kids to think they're causing trouble in our family, but this situation is really tough. I've told Sam we need to convince the grandparents to find distant relatives, we can help search, or get Amy to stop her permanent vacation. Update, thanks to everyone who offered good advice and resources via direct messages. I called my state's Department of Children's Services by getting approved as foster parents. They said we can only have two kids per room, and they must be of the same gender, so we don't meet the requirements for housing, unless we only take the boy. There's no way the kids or the grandparents would agree to splitting them up. They also said we can't use an RV as a bedroom. I also called about the kids' social security benefits. They can get $900 and a month because it depends on how much their parents worked. Jack worked occasionally, and Linda did not. Sam and I have explained that we're not legally eligible to take the kids, so now the grandparents think Amy should step up. I don't think she will, but we're staying out of her discussions with them. It's better than what she did to us. I'm exploring other options to help find the kids a place to stay. One idea is to make Amy ask her and her husband's friends to help find good and safe foster parents, and we can visit the kids if they want us to. I think she'll do it this time because she's the only one left who can legally take the kids, unless the laws in Georgia State differ. A note. For those who are child-free, I respect that choice, but Amy shouldn't volunteer us without asking, and then expect us to take on responsibility while she avoids any effort. Being child-free doesn't mean she can offload her responsibility onto us. Thank you for listening to the whole story. Wishing you a wonderful day.